Hello, welcome to Double Talk. My name is Mark Steffen. Joining me today is a very special guest host, is Alice Little. Alice, thank you for joining us on Double Talk. She's sitting in for the vacationing Michael Mandel. So Michael, he's out having fun. If you see this online, Michael, hello. <laughs> and uh, send us a postcard, won't you? Now today, um, we finally have some good weather in Las Cruces, and which means it's baseball season. Baseball season is, uh, well, and spring break is happening, and uh, that means that the, the games will soon be starting. And right here in Las Cruces, we have our very own baseball team, the Las Cruces Vaqueros. And uh, they play out at Apodaca Park, all their home Apodaca games. Apodaca Park. Apodaca Park, over on Madrid Street. <coughs> now, the Vaqueros, uh, they represent Las Cruces in their league, and they play four or five other teams around the state. And... Um, so this is a different team from the university team. Exactly. Those are the Aggies, and they play college games. These are, it's almost a semi-professional team. Some of these guys may actually go on to play uh, professional ball. So is this a city team, or like a county team, or? No, it's a, privately, it's a private business, like, like Major League Baseball. It's a private business. Each team is its own business, own, has owners. And this team has owners. And uh, the league uh, was founded by a group of people who wanted to own baseball teams, apparently. And they chose Las Cruces as one of the home bases for the Vaqueros, the home base for it. Now, the problem with the team is they're really underfunded. They kind of pave their way as they go. And, um, but most of the players on the team are not from Las Cruces. Uh, there's three or four players actually are from Las Cruces, and they live here. But the rest of the team, about 20 guys, live elsewhere, so they need a place to stay when they when the teams play in Las Cruces and when they practice here. So the team is looking for people to put them up in their homes. Uh, some people take uh, one, some take take two players if they have the room for it. Uh, you could take one, couldn't you? No. No? <laughs> Sorry. You don't, you well, don't think the cat would like how that? How long of a time period would they need to be put up for? Well, it would be throughout the season, and they wouldn't be there every night because the team plays on the road. They'll go to Roswell, they'll go to Alamogordo, wherever they play. Uh, so it's, it'll be a period of several months, baseball season, about three months, I guess. And uh, so you'd also not only give them a place to sleep, but eat as well. And uh, they probably wouldn't be there for all the meals. To be a way of you to help sponsor right. the Vaqueros. Right, and in, in exchange, you'd get tickets to the games. And, uh, it, it, and plus, you kind of get involved with the team. So, so how many of the games, how many games would they be playing here in Las Cruces, uh, more or less? I think about 30. Really? About and about are these games. games on the weekends and the evenings? Is there any particular? Some on the weekends, some during the week, just like baseball, regular baseball season. Mm -hmm. It's whenever, and we don't have a printed season yet. Uh, they haven't provided one of those. But um, as soon as we get one of those, we'll be happy to share it with you. And uh, So when does the season run? That's a good question. I don't know when they start, know, but when I, they run? I believe it begins in May, end of April, first part of May. And they, um, but they need to square these these homes away now so that they know right. what, what so to count once on. Right. So once they, yeah, once they come, they have places. Right. So now the team is also asking for sponsors uh, to sponsor the team. Each night they sponsor uh, a, a business would sponsor that that evening's game. And so any businesses out there who would like to sponsor the Vaqueros. Uh, get in touch with the email or the telephone number you see on the screen and uh, give them a call, get in touch with them. They'll tell you all the details for a business. It's a great way to promote your own business while getting involved with a local sports team. So um, we'll see you at the Sounds ballpark. Like a good thing. Channel 98 will, will be sponsoring one of the games sometime during the season and we'll see you all out there at the ballpark, the Las Cruces Channel. <clears throat> and uh, those of us that, who are uh, Michael and I and, and Chris, our producer, who do double talk, will be there and uh, throwing out the first pitch of that particular game. So we'll see you all there. Very good. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> those guys are all in pretty good shape. And um, something, something the fellas needed in World War II for the Bataan Death March. All those poor guys. They, they, they were in good shape because they were in the military. They were in the Navy and the Army. And many of them were from New Mexico, as it turned out. There's a New Mexico National yes. Guard. Yeah, they got captured by the Japanese in the Philippines and were forced marched some 60 miles north to a prison camp where they where they sat out the rest of the war until they were liberated. With carrying their backpacks? Carrying what backpacks they might have. 
and uh, with very little water, very provided. little water, no food. No food. They were tortured and killed along the way. Many of them. Well, every year to commemorate that, it's terrible. They hold a memorial Bataan Death March out of White Sands Missile Range. Uh, they do 24 miles through the desert over hill and dale, and many of them uh, choose to carry full packs, 60 pound packs, just so they can get the, that, that experience. It's to commemorate the march. You did, right. you were participated in that a couple years ago. Participated with it uh, one year, and uh, many people just do it solo. Other people do it as teams. Lots of army personnel do it as teams, and uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. And, and there's still a few of the original guys who yeah. participated in the in the Japanese death march for a few more years, and they show up as honored guests. We we lost one just recently, uh, and you know World War II, we lose a thousand veterans a day. And some uh, people participate without the backpacks, just trying to do just the hike. Exactly, and that is strenuous. The hike itself is grueling because yeah. it's very hot, yes. and it can be windy, blowing sand, and it's not flat. It's up, and it's down, and it's extremely hot. They do provide water it's along difficult. the way. Yes, at least our guys get water <laughs> if you. Yes. Those poor guys. If they dropped, they dropped oh, on the original one. Either left in there or they killed them on the yeah. spot. Yeah. So the Bataan Death March, uh, they just had it last week. It was a big success. There was a, a risk that they might not hold it this year because of funding uh, cuts. But uh, somehow they were able to, to get the money. It doesn't cost that much, I guess. But uh, you hold any event. It's good to remember the sacrifices. Right. And they hold that every march out of White Sands. When it rolls around next year, we'll, we'll mention it on the show. and. I, I recommend uh, going out, even if you don't participate, you can go out and, and observe. Now, uh, <coughs> the county, as I was reading in the Sun News and listening to uh, in the radio, went and, um, well, let, let me skip that. The county of Doniana is ranked fifth in health in New Mexico. In other words, we're the fifth healthiest county in the state, which means there's four other counties healthier than us. I wondered about that because aren't we like the second largest city? Isn't second largest city? Las Cruces second, the second most second populous largest. county. So, so for us to be ranked fifth, that would mean to me. I, I think we should be ranked higher because we have a higher population. Or, but maybe what it's saying is people with a lower population have better food. Well, have better exercise. Food and exercise basically is what determines your health. So. Um, I guess our diets down here aren't as healthy. They're overall. talking also about educational opportunities, which you'd think would be better in a larger city. Well, I mean, you would, but. People who are educated about what it takes to be healthy will be healthy. And uh, maybe those, those, if more people are, are dropping out of school, which we have a very high rate of down here, higher than Albuquerque, say, then they're not learning how to eat healthy, how to live healthy, how to live healthy lives. So I'm sure we can do better. I don't know how, how often they take these these rankings. Yeah, I was surprised but that I, we were only fifth. Right, I do know that, uh, in fact, I saw it right here on the paper, that... Let's see what it just says. In 2012, 24% of Donia Anna County residents were uninsured. So if you don't have the money or the insurance to go to the doctor, you're not going to take that step necessary to improve your health. If you have an illness or an mm -hmm. injury, you're just going to live without it and it could get worse and worse. Said so they also included longevity, violent crimes, housing. That all contributes that, to that health. That all contributes to health and yes. So, so, that's, so that's that. Uh, we're, we're healthy, right? We try. Of course, they said 24% of Doniana County residents don't have health insurance. That was 2012. That's before Obamacare. So I'm hoping that by now, it's almost three years later, more people do have health That insurance. was one of the points of Obamacare was to try to make the country healthier by having health yeah. insurance available, available to the uninsured. To the uninsured, yes. And uh, of course, a lot of people down here access Medicaid because it's medical welfare and a lot of people down here are on welfare as well. And the Medicaid uh, went way up. Um, the participants in Medicaid, not the Right, not the yeah, cost of it. Yeah. Now, uh, one thing that did go up was sales tax. Yes. The county voted a, a sales tax increase of three eighths of one percent. 
Now you say, well, three-eighths of one percent, that doesn't sound like very much, uh, but how much is that? Well, if you spent a hundred dollars, one percent would be a dollar tax. So with the three-eighths of one percent, it makes the total sales tax very close to eight percent now. Right. So if you spent a hundred dollars, you'd be spending eight dollars on tax. We were paying like seven and a half percent almost. So now we pay mm -hmm. another almost half a percent uh, tax. So if you buy a hundred dollars worth of stuff, you you're paying what? If you buy a hundred dollars worth of stuff, you'll be paying almost eight dollars in tax. Eight dollars in tax. But what they were saying, it replaces some state funding that um, for some reason we're not getting it anymore. It's getting phased out. So. Because of it was replacing state funding, the county commission was able to vote the tax. It didn't have to be the, the people. Right, because in the past, the we've had elections to vote on tax increases, and we've always voted those down. But I noticed the week before the um, county commissioners were to vote on this, there was articles in the paper about how the sheriff's office have uh, the worst cars in the state for their deputies to ride around in. Yes, uh, in the picture of the terrible car on the right. page, you know, I think of the front page, if I'm how, not mistaken. How, how poorly paid the officers are, how they really can't afford to give them lots of overtime. And, and uh, how they're losing them, they train them, they train, uh, train them at the sheriff's department, and then they get uh, recruited by the police department because the police department pays more, has a better salary, so as soon as they can get on with the city police, they move that. And then there was also in the article how it's for I assume pay raises for the county yes. detention personnel, which is very important. It said that they were, the, the attrition rate of the people at the county detention was so bad that they were having to pay a lot of overtime. Not pay a lot of, not only pay a lot of overtime, but the employees were working a bunch of scheduled, to not, fill it, to fill not voluntary, the scheduled overtime. Right. And it's cr creating a great deal of burnout at the detention center. So I agree that these these things need to be addressed. We can't have law enforcement running without adequate funding. Um, the editorial there was an editorial that tended to disagree, but um, I wasn't entirely sure. Well, he did say that you know they do uh, need to give raises, but uh, to county employees, but they do have a very nice uh, compensation package. Uh, they have a nice insurance for the for the employees, and but uh, they also have competitive. The salaries are, are competitive uh, with most of the county uh, employees, and their their vacation, paid vacations, and benefits are on a par. So those people aren't hurting in that regard. Uh, with others in the state, is that what he meant? Yes, uh, other public employees. Oh, other public, okay. But it's in the law enforcement area where they, they are hurting. Plus, uh, you know, the roads need to be fixed. And... Uh, Which I'm behind that. Yes. We... Uh, it's... You hate but, it when there's orange barrels up and the inconvenience of going around them. But you really need uh, to have the roads in better repair. Right now, the, the, um, the commission vote, it was a 4 to 1 vote. And with the only uh, dissenter was uh, uh, Ben Rossin voting against the uh, tax increase. <clears throat> so um, that starts. By the way, it doesn't. It's not immediate. It goes into effect July first. So, so it's pretty quick. It's already almost April. Right. So when you go to the grocery yeah. store, now you won't get. We don't tax groceries in, in New Mexico anymore, or uh, medicines. But uh, if you go to buy um, non-medicine items in the grocery store. Uh, or then you go it, to the pharmacy, I think the pharmacy. So medicine is not taxed. Medicine is not taxed. No, but go not. The hardware store. Hardware store. <laughs> uh, <laughs> any, any other kind of store. Clothing store. Restaurants. Restaurants. That all goes yeah. up, which means their prices are going to go up. If you got a haircut, the price of the haircut may go up a little bit to pay yeah. for the, the increased tax that your barber is going to have to cover. Well, so. Public safety is important, though. So, I, yeah, you know. and we agree with that. Let's take a break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, we got a lot of more great stuff to talk about.
Attention users of the blood thinning drug Xarelto. If you or a loved one has been hospitalized or died from serious internal bleeding after taking Xarelto, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call the Sentinel Group now. Potential claims are being reviewed for users of Xarelto who have suffered severe bleeding or hemorrhaging, stroke or even death. Our network of experienced attorneys are ready to help fight for you. You won't pay a thing until your case is settled. Call the Sentinel Group now. Don't wait. Have you or a loved one suffered complications after uterine surgery from the use of a power morselator? If so, call the Sentinel Group now. You may be entitled to significant compensation. The FDA estimates that one in 350 women undergoing a myomectomy or hysterectomy have unsuspected sarcoma or cancer in the uterus. The Sentinel Group's experienced network of attorneys have years of experience fighting big medical companies and is ready to fight for you. So if you've developed uterine cancer, call the Sentinel Group now for a free confidential consultation. Listen up, America! The price of life insurance has gone down 60% over the last 15 years. Many Americans know they need it, and some that have life insurance know they don't have enough. How would your family get by without you? How are you planning for the uncertainties of life? Find out how easy it is to protect the ones you love. The quote is free, and there are no obligations. Listen up, America. Call now. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we're buying a car, is always a celebration. An important message for Americans in need of health insurance. If there's been a recent change in your life, you are eligible for immediate protection under the Affordable Care Act. If you're uninsured because you missed the enrollment deadline, we can help. To get the protection you need, you can visit the health care exchange and spend hours exploring your options. Or you can make a single call to health markets and let us do the legwork for you at no cost or obligation. Call the number on your screen now. Operators are standing by. Get the coverage you need. Call now. Not attorney spokesperson. This is a medical alert. If you or a loved one took Zofran while pregnant for morning sickness or nausea, and your baby was born with a birth defect, call us immediately. Call 1-800-953-0860. You and your child may be entitled to compensation. Zofran taken during pregnancy may increase the risk of heart defects, cleft lip, cleft palate, and other birth defects. Call us now for a free confidential consultation. Call 1-800-953-0860. 1-800-953-0860. And we're back. This is Double Talk, Channel 98's premier television talk show. I'm Mark Steffen, along with Alice Little, sitting in for Michael Mandel. Now, uh, moving on from sales tax to uh, a new program that would be paid for somehow by taxes, uh, state income tax, I guess, that would be the home visiting programs that we may or may not have that would teach um, new parents uh, such things as parenting skills, right? Uh, it was a, it's a program that was discussed in the paper. I, I thought it, I was reading it, and I, I had mixed feelings about it, but I, I think it's talking about a program, 82%, uh, this article said that 82% of the babies born in New Mexico are paid for by Medicaid, which struck me as a very high figure. And this uh, representative in Albuquerque, uh, Javier Martinez, was they is familiar with the uh, visiting program it's uh where they go and to the person's home some a trained person goes into the person's home and teaches the person parenting skills teaches them about nutrition for the, themselves and for the baby tries to get the parents encourage the parents to get off drugs or alcohol or any other substance abuse problem issues might be that might be there um, teaches them not to shake the baby and tries to teach them um, what to expect from children. Children's it's behavior. What is the appropriate expectations of children's behavior at certain ages? So what happens is like some people, they were saying, for example, that some parents were upset when a child wet his pants because they thought the child was deliberately doing this to aggravate the parent. 
when in fact this child may not be old enough to be potty, to trained. Be potty trained yet. This is normal behavior for a child of that age. And so they were saying that, um, they were talking about $14 million is the expectation to continue this program for a year. And I thought, you know, I was thinking that's an awful lot of money, but then they were saying, weigh that against, you know, the... The price of not doing it. The price of not doing it. The no. price of repairing, you know, hospitalization and, and repairing the, for the child that has undergone gone trauma and the, the cost of, of trials and jail sentences for people that commit, commit violence, event, on their kids. violence on their children or right. kill their children. So it's a, it's a sad thing. I'm thinking, you know, it's sad that we have to have a state program to teach people how to take care of their children, but really nobody knows how to, well, how to do it till they do it. I and, mean, and part of it goes back to education. Know. They do have certain, certain classes in schools, in high schools, that do teach parenting skills that kids can sign up for. But if they've dropped out of high school to have their babies, then they don't have the benefit of those classes. So they have to learn it somehow. And if there's not a grandmother there to teach them, uh, or if their grandmother never learned it either, and these kids are the benefit of that. Yes, if they, if they, babies if they never babies. were, if they were raised in a home where people were not sensitive to to developmental process, progress in children. But you know, I was actually thinking, reading this, that it would be wouldn't it be cheaper to try to do it as part of the school system? It would be to try to to do a, a study, or they probably have the statistics already somewhere of when people start dropping out because of pregnancy and to try to do this before then or like at um, I think it's Onyate that has a nursery mm -hmm. to, to encourage the mothers to finish high school right well if children drop if children because these are children themselves if they drop out because of pregnancy have a free clinic that they can go to at the school where they're taught this sort of thing maybe it would be I'm not I'm just thinking it might be cheaper there might be other venues to do it but I thought it's too bad that this is an issue, but at least somebody is trying to do, come up with something right. to address the issue. So, and I wonder if it's if that's um, specific to this this part of the country. Is, it, is this a Doniana County problem or a state problem? Uh, but something that you don't see in in Wisconsin or Colorado. It's my understanding that this is one of the highest uh, areas of New Mexico. New Mexico is one of the highest areas for teen pregnancy uh, in the country, it is. I, I believe. And, so I would, of, and we have one of the highest dropout rates, too. Yes, which are which are related to each other. So I, I think that um, I went to a focus group that was about a different issue, and one mm -hmm. of the women in the focus group, um, she was visiting Onyate High School because this is where her children were going to be going. And one of the first things that the tour guide did was show her the room where they, the nursery where they take care of the babies of the pregnant mm -hmm. teens who are still able to continue their education. And the, the guide was very proud of this, and this woman was not from here. She was, I think, from uh, the Midwest. And she was just appalled. She'd never seen such a thing. She'd never seen such a thing, never heard of such, such a thing, was appalled that this would be something that people here would be proud of. <laughs> you know, that, the, oh look, we have a nursery for our unwed mothers to have, I mean, she just, right. so she ho is now homeschooling her children. <laughs> but I mean, it just, I, I could see how someone that's not from this part of the country, that's from a part of the country where this is not as big of an issue, right. she, might just be like, well, the lady didn't realize, you know, not having that here is even worse. Right. You you have to deal with the best of mm -hmm. the best you can do given the situation that you're in. Right. So, so that that's that would be something that our taxes would pay for. But I read this whole article and I was thinking, do we have a visiting an in-home visiting program in Las Cruces? I don't know. Well, the, the, the whole article, article is, doesn't say whether we have one or whether we don't have one. Or how you can access how one you, if who we do you would have call one. If you wanted to, to participate, to be the recipient of the help that this program can provide, nothing. So, um, yeah. anyway, it was an interesting... Uh, Hopefully there'll be follow-ups, and uh, if, we, <laughs> if we learn anything here on Double Talk, we'll pass that information along. Now, <clears throat> one thing our tax money did go to pay for is a brand new sculpture out at the uh, Spaceport America. North of here, two hundred thousand dollars. Now that's the space for it itself. It looks it's kind of like a sculpture on its own. Uh, for this, very um, interesting architecture, and a sculpture was paid over two hundred thousand dollars to build 
this sculpture out there at the spaceport. It's a nice sculpture. I like it. Um, but unfortunately, it's at a place where nobody but the jackrabbits can see it. And, we're, and the public can't even go there anyway. Right, right. It's closed it's off. It's closed off. Except for special events uh, until there's a space, until there's the next, or the next or the first uh, person into space to take off from there. Nobody will see it. But it'll be there. Um, they haven't bothered to put the money up for the road to take you there. And $200,000 of this tax, this three-eighths of a percent tax increase, sales tax increase is going towards Mavita to help in spur economic. That's the same exact amount of money that the tax payers are paying for this sculpture. Right. I just thought it was interesting. It was the same figure. I'm all for, I'm all for uh, public artworks. I like public art. But I think that's the wrong place for it at this time. Maybe later. Well, it should be, in a, first of all, in a public place where the public that's paying for it has the opportunity to, exactly. to enjoy it. Now, um, before we run out of time, we want to mention a couple of uh, theatrical things going on around town this weekend. Uh, this is the final weekend at the Black Box Theater uh, for The Hot House, although it's not directed by Jamie Lloyd, it's directed by uh, Algernon DeMassa. That's uh, at the uh, Black Box Theater downtown. No Strings Theater Company, uh, well, tonight and tomorrow, the two final shows. And then, Wait a minute, today's Thursday. No, no, today's oh, Saturday. Oh, today's Saturday, that's right. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> and then the Las Cruces Community Theater is having a one-act festival. I thought it was this weekend, but I didn't see anything in the paper about it. So, um, and it's not on their website, so I'm guessing it's next weekend. Yeah, but I'm not clear on that. Now, this is, since April Fool's is coming up. Uh, next week. This would be our April Fool's show, basically. Uh, April Fool's has been around since, when is it? Uh, a few hundred years ago. The 18th? 18th century? 18th, 1900s? Right. And it came over from Europe. Uh, somehow it, wind up in, it wound up in April. It used to be in January. So it's a day when uh, pranks and hoaxes are played on people. And uh, so this is our April Fool's show. Now, <laughs> we, we also said goodbye to the, the uh, ranch market down there. Uh, it used to be called the Pro Ranch Market. Then the uh, they were bought out, and it was all Dean's branch market. Uh, they're going out of business. They, they're going out of business because, number one, they didn't advertise. Number two, they, they, they weren't that cheap, really, in most of their items. And, and they tended to cater more toward the Mexican market, which excluded a lot of the other Hispanics, which is most of the people who or are Or even Anglo people gringos. who eat Spanish. Right. You know, who uh, eat the, the no. Spanish food from this area. Now, there's, there's Mexican know. food, and then there's kind of Southwestern food. Southwest, yeah. Spanish, Spanish style. Spanish yeah. um, style, it, It's all good, but uh, uh, now it's, none of that is going to be there. It's going to be a big gaping hole right there on El Paseo, just like Kmart is across the street. Across the street, That's yeah. a big shame. Anyway, we have to wrap up. Alice, thank you for joining us this week. Oh, you're quite really welcome. Really appreciate it. Maybe you'll come back and do it again sometime. Perhaps, yes. And that's, that's all we have right here on Double Talk.